What's up, everybody? My name is Christopher Alexander Kelly the Fourth. I'm here with our very own Adrian Christian Justin Grant Jensen. That's your real name, isn't that it? That is my legit, <laughs> it's insane real name. <laughs> I didn't know we were doing middle names. We are here with ProductionCrate.com bringing you a wonderful new tutorial. This is the effect that we want to recreate from the Deadpool 2 trailer. It's a pretty radical effect that I actually have not seen anyone do yet. All right, so we wanted our footage to look pretty cinematic. A new hot word that everybody's using, <laughs> cinematic and dynamic and organic. So we put the camera on the slider to give it that more cinematic feel. My favorite part was when Chris got punched in his big dumb mouth. That's right. I didn't actually get punched in my big dumb mouth, but the effect looked pretty realistic. My head obscured the lack of actual contact. By the way, uh, did, did you forget I was filming? I did not. So we made the punch look a little more brutal by cutting out a few frames to just speed up that punch since Cable's like part robot. He's a cyborg. He's officially a cyborg, right? Well, I think I think technically he's not part robot. He just suffers from a no organic virus, so there's a very clear distinction there. <laughs> so he's a cyborg. I also used a freeze frame of Cable's arm to extend the punch a bit to make sure that it made contact with Chris's face. Nice. Adrian added a little bit of blood to this effect because he is really mad at me about something. Neither of us can remember what. For lighting the shield effect, we want some practical lighting as we do on pretty much every energy effect we make these days. So Adrian was on lighting duty. He used a flashlight and an orange gel and fired that up the second that Alex raised his arm and generated the shield. You can tell that my job was the most important because in this time lapse here, I'm the only one who is not moving. The asset for the shield itself can be found on footagecrate.com. You can search cable shield effect or you can find it in the force field section on the magic and powers category. You'll also find some slightly different looking black and white versions. These are displacement maps. Go ahead and grab one of those because we'll need one of those later on as well. Bring the shield into After Effects and track it to your actor's arm. I just tracked it by hand. It's actually not that hard. Sometimes tracking by hand is the way to go. Once you're happy with the movement of the shield, duplicate that layer, hold down alt and drag the displacement map that we downloaded from footage crate onto the duplicate. This will replace the old layer with the new one and keep all the animation and transform Talking properties. So there is another shortcut you can do for this. I can't remember what that shortcut is. It should be great this. if it was on screen right now. <laughs> yeah. <that's... laughs> so go ahead and pre-compose this layer, making sure to move all the attributes into the new composition. It should now look exactly the same. But now it's a layer that's the same shape as the composition with all of the animation baked in. That sounds perfect. That's what we need. Go ahead and poke its eye poke out. Poke its eye out. We don't need to see it anymore and we don't want it to see us. All right, go Get ahead here. and make a new adjustment layer under the displacement map layer. Add the effect CC glass. Go ahead and bring the softness way down. We set ours at one. Yeah, yeah, you can, <laughs> I mean, you can set it to whatever you want, but really uh, set it to one. Yeah. You can change the direction of the light to better match your scene if you would like. You can also change the color of the light and choose a color from your scene, if that looks cool. And we use the layer above it, which was the displacement map, as an alpha mat. Whoop, whoop, alpha mat. Alpha mat. Back on Footage Crate, you can also find these energy shield hit effects. Grab a few of those, drop them in at the points where you want the bullets to hit the shield. You can hold down shift and parent them to the shield layer. This will make them jump to the exact position of the shield and also follow its movements. That, that shift parent is a real good trick. We need some sparks as well, you do that. Hey, hey guys. Listen, we need some sparks as well. There's a bunch of these available on the website, footagecrate.com. We use some of the small sparks as well as some of the larger spark blasts. Spark blasts. 
We are going to need motion blur on this effect and there's a few different options. The first is just ticking on the motion blur for all the layers and for the comp. This sort of works, but when you're doing displacement, this can cause issues. This is because the CC glass effect, as well as all displacement effects, as well as all effects that use an input are going to take the motion blur into account before applying the effect. So the effect itself isn't going to be blurred. In our case, it's not that bad. It looks kind of blurred, but it's also rendering these specular highlights which should be blurry, but they're not. We could get away with this method though. My personal favorite motion blur effect is called Real Smart Motion Blur, which I was certain would work in this instance, but I was mistaken and embarrassed and sad. <laughs> and I had to go home and I had to eat an entire chocolate cake. What did you do, Adrian? Uh, I stayed here and kept working. <laughs> That's good. And I realized that the reason the real smart motion blur didn't work very well is because it doesn't actually apply motion blur based on information that's between frames, which is how uh, standard motion blur works. It applies the blur where it thinks it looks like there should be blur. Uh -huh. So if you have a repeating pattern, like our cool hexagon pattern, it's gonna get confused. So luckily there is another option and that is the force motion blur you can add that to an adjustment layer luckily this works out pretty darn well it calculates motion blur the same way that after effects natively does it but since it is an effect you can add it after the other effects are added however this is going to be extremely slow slow to render if you have a lot of stuff going on in your composition. So that's why it's not really in common usage anymore. Right. The off-screen teleportation effect at the beginning is anamorphic prism number eight from our 4K lens flare collection. We sped it up to around 15% of its original speed. Oh my God, so fast. The sounds that we used are all from soundscrate.com. We used mostly sounds from the fighting category as well as the sci-fi category. Did you use punching? We used punching. I Did used, you use uh, clanks? I used, oh yeah, we have some metal clanks and wonks. Did you use gunshots? I used gunshots. Oh yeah, there's the gun category effects. We used a Did lot. You... There's like 50 different effects. It is a beautifully ugly timeline. Just the way I like it. Mm -hmm. That does it for this tutorial, everybody. My name is Chris Kelly. My name is Adrian Jensen. And we love you. <laughs> <laughs> Lady Kratos. Lady Kratos. <laughs>